up at 10 past midnight. First, with strong language from the start, Channel 4's Hip Hop Nights explains why white men can't rap. Hip Hop has become the most successful form of music in the world. What was once the underground movement of black America is now the popular music of choice for white America. And as Eminem becomes the industry's biggest star, could we be witnessing the demise of hip hop as a black culture and the birth of a new era where white rappers rule? something you want to hear, you need to holler at me right now. So make sure you keep it locked in right here, because on the way, Eminem, by request, on the JLB. Back in 1995, music producer Mark Bass was on his way home from work when he heard a young rapper on Detroit's local radio station. I was driving in my car, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I remember hearing this guy rapping on the radio on an open mic. He was like a drum solo, changing up rhythms, flipping the words. It was incredible. So I get him on the telephone, and I introduce myself. And uh, we're talking for a few minutes. And I said, why don't you come on down to the studio, and uh, let's see if we can work together. About 4.15, somebody knocks on the door. And I go outside, and it's this young little white guy. And I go, well, wait a minute. You're Eminem? And he goes, yeah, man. I said, wow. Let's go back, follow the yellow brick road as we go on another episode. Journey with me as I take you through this nifty little place that I once used to call home, sweet home, sweet home. Today, Eminem, a white rapper from the outskirts of Detroit, has become the biggest name in a culture which grew from the inner cities of black America. Eminem, he's my top five. MCs. He's a good artist. He's high. Yeah, Eminem's high. Keeps it real. And he's true to himself, so that's hip hop. I guess you could say he's real. Not like a lot of other rappers. Everything about him is hip hop. From where he grew up, 8 Mile and everything. Everything about Eminem is hip hop. Regardless of where he comes from or what racial preference he is, he's hip hop. There's not much you could do or say to phase me. People think I'm a little bit crazy. I get it from all angles, even occasionally. Doc Crazy or have to step in. His face is everywhere now. You can buy a, you know, a plastic phone cover or a lunchbox for your kids, you know, with his face all over it. He's only the largest, <laughs> largest hip hop artist, you know. It's pretty wild. I call Eminem the bastard son of a thousand gangster rappers, you know? Like Freddy Krueger, like a young little white kid that grew up listening to us. So far, Eminem has sold 70 million records worldwide, as well as generating huge revenue from concerts, merchandise, and his own record label. It's testimony to both his talent as an artist and his ability to appeal to hip hop's largest market. Statistically, 80% of the rap music is bought by white people. Not because white people like it more, it's because they financially have the means to buy it. Uh, a black kid will go out and he'll, he'll rip your CD and he'll have it on a mixtape. The white girl buys your album, your CD, your tour jacket, you know, your DVD, and has the money to fly to Chicago to see your tour, you know? It's a little bit, it's an economic thing. For the white rappers that do succeed in the hip hop industry, the color of their skin can be a major advantage. To date, three of the five best selling rap albums of all time have been by white artists. Any 
anything that you recreate, white will outsell black. It's been proven, you know? That's just economics. Black people ain't mad at that, we accept that. That's just the way of the United States. Today, young white Americans are not only listening to hip hop, they're also aspiring to become the next Eminem. My name's Avi, I play guitar. My name's Drew, play the drums, representing Midwest hip hop. Yeah, you don't know, I mean, I'm Billy, play the bass, make the gal them wind up them ways, for real. My name's Jay, I play the keys. My name's Mikey, I play manager. My name's Paradigm, and I'm an MC. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. Born and bred on the outskirts of Detroit, Paradigm is among a growing number of white artists whose lives and livelihoods are immersed in hip-hop. I've, uh, I've been making music since, uh, since like the early 90s. We had a great live show, um, great songs. I know, it's good music, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a live show, it's always, live show is my, uh, my forte, so. He's a legend in Detroit. Paradigm has become a well-known fixture on the Detroit hip-hop scene, gaining a regular following with his rebellious, alcohol-fueled live shows. So basically, this is our backstage ritual before we go and perform. We drink, we drink some more. Here's to us being dope as fuck. It's what I love to do. It's, it's never boring. It's never, I'm never pissed off. I'm never like, damn, I wish I would've been a carpenter. You know what I mean? I love what I do every day, so. It's a full-time job now. A hobby turned into a job, so I, I'm not mad. Mm. I'm drunk, let me rap. That's what we do before we go out. We take Swiss cheese and throw it against the wall. The rock star shit. My fans are, are mainly white kids, like 98% white kids. Beats and will. Beats and will. This is how we get down. You're just accepting the success you get and, and keep rolling. Make some motherfucking noise. The market for hip-hop continues to grow, and more white fans are listening to rap music than ever before. In the future, will artists like Paradigm start to dominate an industry built upon the foundations of a black culture? That's right! That's right!